going to come back or not. With everything in this election, it all depends on who you talk to. Does the latest CNN poll spell good news for Donald Trump and storm clouds ahead for Hillary Clinton? I bet we have two sides of that story in this panel. The panel tonight, Susan Del Percio. She's a Republican strategist and former official working for the former mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani. Alex Burns is a CNN political analyst and a national political reporter for The New York Times. Theron Johnson is a Hillary Clinton supporter, former Barack Obama campaign staffer. And Carl Higbee is a Donald Trump supporter and a former Navy SEAL. Ding, ding, ding. Let the fun begin. <laughs> new polls, new spin from where you get to hear from the campaign. Alex, we are all old enough to remember when Hillary Clinton was up 10 points. That wasn't so long ago. What happened? Feels like a long time ago, though, doesn't <laughs> Every it? Every day feels like, like a long, long time. time. Exactly. <laughs> Look, I think that, you know, I think when she was up 10 points, she was clearly enjoying a big bounce out of a very successful Democratic convention. Yeah. It was certainly also, you know, there was this coincidence of her best week and probably Donald Trump's worst week of the campaign. So Colliding 10 points time, was yeah. probably always going to be the high water mark. But I do think you have to look back over the month of August now, and it's easier to say with hindsight, but the Clinton campaign made the decision to really sort of step back and let Donald Trump a twist out there in the wind by himself. And I do think there are a lot of Democrats who now feel like that may have been a missed opportunity. That, mm -hmm. you know, even if Trump was inflicting uh, damage to his own campaign, that there was a window there for Clinton and, and Tim Kaine to get out there and continue delivering the kind of uh, assertive, positive message that they had during the convention. And they, and they simply didn't do that. Shocker of all shockers, Hillary Clinton says today, nothing to see here. I don't look at the polls. When they're up, they're up. When they're down, they're down. They're down. I always thought it was going to be a close race. Should this be setting off alarm bells? Is this setting off alarm bells, bells for you there? It should. But the good thing about what she's really talking about is that in the campaign, they really do sort of daily battleground state polls. And mm -hmm. so if you look at the battleground state, she's still leading. Now, those numbers are decreasing a little bit. Right. If, if battleground states Hillary follow Hillary the ever. national trend, <laughs> yeah. that's a real alarm bell. Right. But, but the point is, is that, listen, the, the, the good news for her is this. She's got a lot of negative, you know, content that she can use against Donald Trump. But more importantly, she's got to really talk to the American people and tell them what she stands for. Now, if you look at places like Florida, the state that I worked in, those polls went up and down all the way through the election. But the challenge for Trump is really this. He starts off with 206, and that's the amount of electoral votes that Romney got. You got to get to 270 and, to win the White House. And the challenge for him is, is that he's got much harder pathways to 270 than Hillary Clinton. I mean, she can literally lose Ohio and still become president. She can lose Florida and still become president. But the challenge is, is that she cannot take this guy for granted. She's got to be strong, and I'm very happy to see her talking to press now. That's something that I think that she's good at, and I want her to be more and more authentic. And really we so that... love it when she talks to the press. Yeah. I mean, I love transparency all across the board. I think I speak for every reporter that has ever lived. Donald Trump woke up this morning, Carl Higbee, looked at CNN, even though he likes to trash us as much as possible, oh, yeah. and said what? Said, when he saw these numbers. I said, I like CNN. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, right. It's no, exactly but right. Donald Trump has a history uh, of this. And, you know, that's like, What's I'm not... What's the number that sticks out to you, though, uh, I in, mean, in these, in, that you see in this poll that you like? The number that I, that sticks out to me is, is, is not so much as the national poll, as the steady increase in the battleground states. And I think what you're seeing here, I was, I was in Pittsburgh last week, and I gave a speech, and I was talking to people, and I said, you know, these are Republicans. Are you voting for Trump? And they're... Yeah, maybe, I think. You know, there's a lot of people... You still believe in that theory that there, people are going to vote for Trump, though they don't want... But they're not lot, telling people in the yes, poll that they're going to vote for Trump? And this is from people that I talked to on the ground. And some of these guys were independent and things like that. Look, they, there is a surge of people out there that are not willing to admit they're voting for Trump. That curtain's closes on in November. Susan, are you one of those people? Because you're not even voting. You said yeah. you're voting for Trump. Well, I, mean, look, I, I think when Donald Trump... You know, woke up this morning. He said, "Yippee!" And I think his and I think <laughs> Kellyanne is not something I hear. And I think, I think <laughs> Kellyanne and the campaign team were very happy because not only did they have the the poll that came out, they also had the front page of a lot of stories was Hillary Clinton's emails. Yep. So those are the things that if you're the Trump campaign, you're very happy to see. Mm -hmm. Within the numbers of that poll, the one thing I think Donald Trump should be really looking strong at and happy about is. The number of enthusiastic voters, 56, 58 percent of Trump voters are enthusiastic. And that means Hillary they're Clinton, shown the number is, is lower. Is 46. Yeah. That is a big swing. Now, what we that also shows is that 10 point lead we were talking yep. about. Now, Republicans, instead of supporting tr Trump at 75, 80 percent, they're now in the 90s. So that's what happened. Hillary Clinton lost independents and Republicans when she went silent. And all right, I think you that's guys are what all way are. too smart on the poll numbers. Here's something that I don't know if we can even, no matter what degree you have, you can wrap your mind around. Where does Donald Trump stand on immigration policy today, Alex Burns? I don't know if Donald Trump knows where he stands on immigration Legitimately, policy. Legitimately, though, he maybe doesn't. No, really. I mean, he's been he's been talking himself in circles on the issue for a couple of weeks. We had this, you know, 
big speech in Arizona last week. The promise was we're going to finally route, set One the, route only. Right. Legal status or citizenship, you get out and you have to come back in. And it's one of the things, just speaking as a reporter, that's so frustrating about covering Donald Trump as a candidate, that it's not really clear that he has any particular fixed policies aside from we're going to build the wall. Does right? it? Don't and voters deserve else a fixed policy of, of some sort? Well, or at least they, right. at least they deserve a sense of exactly what's on the table and what's off the table. The thing right. that's striking about Trump is that you know every presidential candidate, once they actually become president, has to negotiate Governing with Congress. Governing's harder than campaigning. Things right. change. But a presidential candidate can set parameters and say what's on the table, what's definitely yeah. off the table. And with Trump, it just changes I'm all the time. I'm not sure either. Carla, are you sure what he stands for on immigration, other than the wall? Yes. So Donald Please Trump has been... Me. So here, here's the main thing that Donald Trump is focusing on right now is the criminals, the ones that are... Everyone agrees on criminals. Yeah, exactly. Got to go. But that only represents about 7 to 8% of the total like illegal... 690,000 people. Yeah, exactly. So um, of Sorry. the 10 to 12 million that are here um, illegally. So what he wants to do is he wants to focus on that first. And I think so start, some of the reality is starting to set in like, can I fiscally accomplish this? Can mm -hmm. I physically accomplish this? Mm -hmm. Those are things that he's starting to, to sit down with his team and be like, okay, how are we going to do this? All right, maybe we should just focus on this for now. And then once we've gotten the criminals out... Then we'll focus on the other illegal immigrants that are still remaining. But that is what is fundamentally scary about Donald Trump and policy. He, he's been given a lot of outs on previous positions before he ran. And so he changed. He, he, right. he flip-flopped, he evolved, whatever. But immigration was his signature policy. It still is. He yep. cannot say, standing there today, what he is going to do with 9 million people who are here illegally. Then that's taking out for the criminals and everyone else. How can you say you want to do something and not even claim how you're going to pay for it or how it should exist? Either he went from deporting everybody to now saying, you might be able we, to say, we, we don't, okay, wait, no, 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 but that is just fundamentally concerning as a voter. And should you be aware of where your candidate Again, stands? But are voters paying attention? Do voters care specifically about policy? Pause, pause, <laughs> breathe. Reset, stand by. <laughs> Joe Biden has some advice for Hillary Clinton. And ponder this one. What does presidential look like? Hmm. We'll see.